Hello and welcome to the Courtright cast. As I told you guys, we are going new and improved every single week. So I have got these beautiful lights and a beautiful new co-host. My name is Alex Courtright and get this. This is Jonathan Courtright, the other half of the Courtright cast. We've been going solo for a couple weeks now, but I really wanted to get this into a more dynamic place. So here we are, new and improved, new set. I hope you guys like it. We'll keep on working on it. Maybe get some cool art, some logos around, um, some branded podcast mugs <laughs> for that tasty, tasty coffee. And uh, yeah, otherwise, this is what we're going to be rolling with. So if you enjoy it, go ahead and smash the like button. I mean, you might as well. We haven't gotten into any content yet, but hit the like button and subscribe because don't we just look great? We look pretty good. We, we look pretty good. So yeah, we're going to jump right into today's episode. And I wanted to open up with a subject that just blows my mind. Like, and that is... The Star Wars fandom. Now, we've talked about this a lot across the Internet. Everyone knows the Star Wars fandom is nothing to be trifled with. Yeah. <laughs> we can say that we we know what happened to the new Disney trilogy with The Last Jedi and the Rise of Skywalker. All sorts of problems, all sorts of not problems turned into problems by the fans whatsoever. That being said, Star Wars fandom, don't come after me. I, I don't have any problems with you. I'm just saying. Um, I don't want to be this ever be the subject of their wrath because yeah. their wrath is crazy. But what really blows my mind is the things that they uh, they are people they're They're YouTubers that make full time incomes and like daily videos just talking about Star Wars, not just talking about Star Wars, talking about Star Wars news like well, there's been a lot of it lately. There's, but is there though? That's what I want to know. I'm like, is Star Wars so expansive that like you can make a living just being like, so this new thing came out with Star Wars lately. I mean, with what they got in the pipeline now, I guess so. So, so I guess let's talk about what they have in the pipeline because it confuses me every time I try and bring it up. Like whenever I'm thinking about what they have in the pipeline, I forget about another thing. So like right now, we, we have our Disney trilogy and they're working on new movies. There's been talk of all sorts of directors or producers coming on board for new movies like Kevin Feige's involved. Um, they, they, Ryan Johnson was supposed to get a whole nother trilogy, but we don't know if that's happening. There's just like all sorts of movie things going on. And you'd think that would be it. But the most interesting news or leaks and the like are actually revolving around the TV shows, because not only do we have The Mandalorian. We also have an Obi-Wan TV show mm -hmm. that Ewan McGregor signed on for. I've heard that that's only going to be one season, though. Yeah. And also, it feels like we've been hearing about that forever. We've been. I and think I'm people wanted sure. it for years and they talked about it before. It, they, they like wished it into fruition. <laughs> like, yeah. Like they wished it into existence. But that actually is happening as far as we know. But I think it's only going to be one season. But aside from that, there's talk of new animated shows. There's talk of I've heard talk of a. A Coruscant TV show. I don't know if it would be animated or real, but like an underbelly of Coruscant type of show that was like kind of removed from Star Wars. There is the there's a series that they're working on now with uh, Leslie Headland being the main showrunner or director. I'm not sure a lot about it, but they're talking about doing a series with Brie Larson as the lead, a really female centric series in which I think that it's going to be set between the prequels and maybe the originals. I'm, I'm really not sure because the thing is. There's so much news all the time, but it's all just leaks. Yeah. That's what kills me. The, it's it's all just people just speculating about these leaks that they've heard. And a lot of them are true. Some of them aren't always true. But it's like we're not even to the point of having trailers for this. Stuff. Yeah. Well, also, after after the Disney sequel trilogy was completed, like a lot of this stuff got scrapped, too. Yeah. Like, after Han Solo. We were going to have a Boba Fett movie. Oh, I forgot about that. And that time. got scrapped because Rogue One and Han Solo got, you know, Rogue One a little less so, but Han Solo got yeah. mixed reception and didn't really do that well box office wise for a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Yeah. So they pretty much they basically they're in a in a phase of reworking everything about Star Wars. I mean, I've I've heard that George Lucas is back as a part of the gang. It's it's supposed to be like Dave Filoni, who was our Clone Wars creator, I believe, mm -hmm. main producer, writer on a lot of that. Um, 
John Favreau yeah. and George Lucas are really heading this up. Uh, the CEO of Disney, I think, has his eye on everything. I think they're transitioning CEOs right now. I can't remember his name. I think it's like Bob Chapek. Is that Wasn't it? it Bob Iger? It was Bob Iger was what it was. But I think he's phasing out. OK. And so that's the thing. They're like they've got these new people coming in and basically they kind of realize how Star Wars has fallen apart. As a fandom, it's not just that like it's falling apart, like it's not making any money anymore. I'm sure it's making plenty of money, but they realized just how mad they've made the fans. Yeah. And that has led to I spe- I think especially George Lucas. I would love to be a fly on the wall in those meetings <laughs> and just I just want to know what's going through George Lucas's head now that he's back and involved. And he's like, yeah, you guys couldn't do this without me. Yeah. Yeah. And Star Wars is having that that thing that keeps happening where once they move on to a new trilogy and it's not as good, people look back on the old one and they're like, well, the prequels weren't as bad as we thought they were. Oh, well, come you on. Because they did that with the Spider-Man movies too. Like Amazing Spider-Man came out and people were like, Spider- the old Spider-Man movies to weren't be good. Fair, people- and then Homecoming comes out and people are like, well, actually they aren't <laughs> that bad. People were, okay, people were more keen on the prequels around the time when the new trilogy was coming out. They yeah, were, it, but after but the it new has, trilogy, it's gotten even better. It's accelerated, yeah, 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 for sure. But, so, like, with these new TV shows, what it's what's weird is just like how much news there is and how much they're planning to change and talking about. I mean, a lot of people pin the blame for uh, the middling success or the bad reception of uh, the last trilogy on Kathleen Kennedy. Which, while I don't want to go in and just bash Kathleen Kennedy. I will say that it makes a lot of sense based on what we know that she had a large hand in the destruction of that series. I mean, the things I don't think that the rise of Skywalker was ever going to be a great movie. That being said, the stories that are i mean, pretty much confirmed stuff like she deleted so much of what was shot. There were scenes that just sounded cool or were good ideas. And she just she just came in and was like, we're not using those scenes. And it seemed like she had a lot of control in that area. And I would take that as rumor, but the fact that supposedly she has been relegated to only one project at a time at Disney with within Star Wars, at least that it makes me think that she's on like some kind of probation or there. Someone is trying to push her out and I can't say that I'm mad about it. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the destruction of the new trilogy was due to fan backlash because, you know. I can't blame it entirely on the fans, but that last one was a checklist of how many things can we fix and and fix is a nice way to put it. Yeah, that the, people were mad about. It was like it felt like they were just going down the list like fix that, fix that, fix that, fix it. Like it wasn't a movie. Yeah, at it, all. And yeah, it didn't even make sense, though, because I mean, there were so many reshoots involved and so much to it. It was like just this Frankenstein movie. But so, I mean, and I don't want to dwell. There's a million reviews and deconstructions of that series. I don't want to dwell too much on it because like all the other content they've got going on is so much more interesting because I feel like that's what George Lucas and uh, Favreau and Feige want to do is that they're kind of just at a point where like we want to move on yeah. like but. On the other side, I've heard talk of there being a four hour Rise of Skywalker cut that they want to release on Disney Plus because so much footage was shot for that movie that they didn't put into the movie that Kathleen Kennedy deleted. And it's supposed to be an Abrams slash Lucas cut like George Lucas is working on it and like entire new plot lines and scenes like that's crazy. How? How likely is that rumor to be false, though? I really don't know. I I find it hard to believe that George Lucas would have any interest in working on the sequel trilogy after the things that he's expressed about it. You really can't tell. I kind of feel like if he's coming back to Star Wars, he's going to be like, all right, let's move on. Let me do what I want to work on or, you know, let me consult on something new. Yeah. I, don't, I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to go back to the sequel trilogy because I, it's so far away from what he would want for Star Wars anyway. Yeah, I agree with that. But what's interesting is that there's a lot of talk about what actually is supposed to be in the movie and how it originally was supposed to be. Like there's talk of like in the end and the fight with Palpatine and Rey when Rey hears force ghosts talking to her. It was originally supposed to be Ben that was hearing those force ghosts and you're supposed to see them. And they were supposed to help him battle Palpatine and things like that. Like there's supposed to be a lightsaber duel with that. There's talk of scenes where 
Ben Solo was supposed to, I'm not even sure he was supposed to die. He was supposed to help Ray build her own lightsaber. It was going to be yellow and double bladed things. I've heard, I've heard so much that I can't even keep it straight, but and that's the, that's the rise of Skywalker talk. And that's not even what's in the pipeline. I mean, we've got, a. Uh, there, there's talk of a uh, animated series that they want to do that's set after the rise of Skywalker. And like the rumors on that are just crazy. They're what, talking about, about Ray, about Ray. Like they've said that they, maybe it'll be like an animation, more realistic animation style about um, Ray kind of forming this, uh, like a, a new Jedi temple on Tatooine or something. <laughs> there's just a lot of people have, have said they, that doesn't really make sense. Tatooine is not a great place for a temple, whatever, but they're trying to keep it with the Skywalkers. There's talk of using the force power of the wills. I don't want to get too nerdy on this. I know <laughs> like everyone's like, what are the wills? But you know, the power of the wills is kind of a big deal in some of the old Star Wars legends uh, stories. I think they even brought it into Clone Wars at some points. And there's talk about like reviving Luke Skywalker with like a specific force power that where he can't stay forever but like bringing him back in essence to like battle palpatine again or something or to be, like to give him his proper send off and it seems like with a lot of these new series that they've got going on what they really are trying to do is make star wars right again not just from like the rise of skywalker checklist of things that they were fixing but like kind of going back and there's talk. I mean, I've heard talk about a, the last Jedi cut that was three hours long that adds in scenes about Luke's death that make it better or justify it or make it different. Like they're talking about doing all these things with books and TVs and shows that basically justify some of the things that happened in the, in this last trilogy. That being said, I don't know that they can justify much, but I think they're at least just trying to make it right with fans a little bit. And I don't know that it makes it right with fans. I don't know that people are going to be totally happy. I do think that what they can do with all this is get people to be like, okay, you've apologized. Mm -hmm. You actually, what I do think about this, I'm not that excited about new Star Wars stuff. But what I do think is mostly because they lost me. But what I think is that they have people that care about Star Wars and understand the essence of Star Wars in the driver's seat now. Yeah. Well, I think if they're going to fix Star Wars, if they're going to make it a property that people really want to see again, they're going to have to move away from the new trilogy. There yeah. are people that like the new trilogy, but the majority of people were, at the very least, disappointed by it. And I don't think going back to it is is going to do anything for them. Like if they went, oh, let's go back and let's let's bring back Luke. Let's bring back this. Let's fix that. Let's do the things that like fans think that we should have done the first time. I don't think this can fix anything. I think their best bet is to move forward with something. Like, look at the way the Mandalorian did it. The Mandalorian kind of, I mean, we knew it was coming out, but it kind of came out of nowhere and people were surprised by how solid it was. And it was a totally different thing. They didn't go, we're going to use the Mandalorian to retcon everything that happened in the last yeah. few movies. They just did something completely yeah. different. And it's been their most successful Spin and off. I think they're really going to lean into that. But in that being said, with all these retcons and um, e explanations of past failures, um, I have heard of things like uh, Lucas wanting to do an Old Republic show. I don't know if that would be live action or animated, but it seems that Lucas actually is very aware of the Star Wars Legends, what used to be the extended universe stories. Mm -hmm. I think he's very aware of that. I've heard of all these series, possibly including a lot of nods to characters from those or character straight out of it or arcs from that so i do think that they i do think they have star wars fans best interest in mind now and i think that's all i can say for it i mean going on to the mandalorian like you said the mandalorian is the first thing that's really captured star wars since i'd say the force awakens because the force awakens wasn't a great movie but it really did have the star wars essence to it mm -hmm. that was really nostalgic and it really brought fans in mandalorian had a lot of that so if they're going to lean into that, I think that's a good step forward. That being said, I wasn't a huge fan of season one of The Mandalorian. I was a huge fan of some elements of it, but I wasn't a huge fan. Can I be honest? I didn't finish it. You didn't finish it? No, I think I made it to episode five. What five. were the eight well, episodes? There was like seven or eight. Yeah, I made it to like episode five. I thought episodes one, two, and three were really good and I was really enjoying it. Episodes four and five, or maybe I made it to six. I want to say I made it to six and I so didn't care. 
by episode six. And it wasn't that it was bad. It just didn't hold my interest at all. It felt like it felt like they were just sort of it felt like they just stalled out midway through. Mm. It was like they were doing these little like mini stories that were kind of just separate from everything else. But they kept acting like they had an overarching plot. Yeah. And they kept pretending like they were going to move it forward. But from what I saw, they didn't. So the Mandalorian season two comes out, I think, like the end of this month, like the 30th or 31st. And that's what I'm really looking at is I don't say the Mandalorian season one was bad. That being said, I fully agree with that. I finished it and I still agree with that. There were some good episodes. There were some gr- that was what was so disappointing was there were some great episodes. They had such they set such a great tone and feel. And then they really just kind of lost the ball, almost like they didn't expect the success that they got. Like they were kind of like, oh, this is just kind of our fun thing. And we just kind of did what we wanted with it. And it's not actually supposed to be some big overarching plot of like yeah. this massive show. It's just kind of like a try. They're just trying something new. And it got so big that it started to collapse under the weight of the popularity. Have yeah. you seen the trailer for season two yet? Yeah, I just watched it yesterday. What did you think of it? I actually thought it looked pretty good. See, I didn't think it was that impressive. It didn't look bad. But when I say that season two needs to impress me, well, one of the things I thought was impressive was that I thought the visuals looked better. Like, I don't know if I, I mean, I'm I'm assuming they probably Did they show visuals. Yeah, just I've the watched effects. it a few times. Like, I guess I just thought it looked better because I felt like it was, one of the things, nothing to the trailer. One of the things that was hard about the Mandalorian for me was that it kind of looked like those fan movies that you see on YouTube. Like those pretty good Star Wars fan movies, <laughs> you know, but the effects just aren't up to the level that a Star Wars movie is going to look like. And I mean, you have to accept that with a Star Wars TV show. It's just not going to look like the movies. And I thought the Mandalorian did a fine job with that, but it did kind of remind me of those fan movies on YouTube. And that's not a diss on it, but I thought that the season two trailer, the effects looked better to me. See, when it comes to season two, I didn't get much out of the trailer because I didn't feel like they gave us anything. Not that they have to, but what I'm looking for is something more. Uh, the problem with the first one was that the story got it started to meander and it felt like they were trying to do episodic adventures. And that's actually fine. I'm OK with that. But the way they did it, the episodic adventures were not all strong. There was yeah. this episode with this wrestler actor girl that was like just awful random planets in which they're like hanging out with people and just sitting around. And it felt like their justification for the overarching plot of everyone searching for this little baby Yoda made people not really it felt like they were trying to tie them together when they didn't need to be or couldn't be like they were just like oh and by the way someone's still searching for him so we gotta leave we just gotta leave now it's like it just didn't feel it didn't feel cohesive they did rely on baby yoda a lot that that's (laughs) the other thing i love the mandalorian not talking like hardly at all but it made for really thin storylines a lot and the problem is that the supporting cast of almost every episode was truly awful in a lot of circumstances. Yeah. I what was it? It was the episode that um Bryce Dallas Howard directed. Mhm. The that was the one on that like green planet the like supporting indoor. characters. Like I don't know where they picked up those actors, but they might as well have grabbed them off the street yeah. and just been like, "Here. Yeah. Here's a costume. Go." That was what a lot of the episodes felt like. So, what I'm really hoping for coming into season 2 is that they're like, "Oh, okay. The first season was really well received. And people are ready to get away from The Rise of Skywalker and People want all these nods to other other old Star Wars stuff. They want legends um, ideas involved in it. We want I mean, there's talk of Ahso- Ahsoka Tana, I think is going to be in this mm-hmm. second season. I don't think we've seen her yet. I don't think we've seen a visual for her. Uh, I haven't seen Who's a set photo. Her? Uh, it's what's her name? Why am I blanking out? The girl from Punisher Daredevil. I forget her name. But uh, the th- she's supposed to be in the I don't know how big of a role she's going to play, but that's going to make a lot of people happy. Like everyone loves Ahsoka. So what they need to do is bring in these characters and get a real story going. And I'm going to need something more from the Mandalorian as a person at some point. I get the whole he doesn't take his mask off and stuff and doesn't talk much, but we're going to have to move more into that because you, they're going to reach a point where they're no longer able to execute a story by the book. Like we need character. We need character and development. And it's going to be really hard if they don't bring him in more. Did you hear what may have happened with him? The actor Pedro, it's Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a rumor that he walked off the set. 
Oh, see, because, I heard that, but because I didn't he hear anything was, about why. Because he was um he was wanting scenes without his helmet on. <laughs> and 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 apparently it caused like a big fight. And I think he went to Kathleen Kennedy and oh, she got God. involved and then they like there was such a disagreement that he just walked off set and I heard that they're trying to get him to basically do the voice and just have somebody like a, his stunt hmm. double do the body and, and him I still voice the... it over. I mean, it seems like I, I haven't heard anything past that. It's still a I rumor. I saw the clickbait videos about, but, oh, Pedro Pascal walks off set, but I never heard anything about it. The other thing I saw, though, was I did see more clickbait like articles that were like, Oh, he's back on set and everything's okay. He's yeah. still in doing it. So I know that everything's okay, at least with the mm-hmm. series. Like he's not falling apart, but that would make sense to me. But that being said, I don't want him to just take his mask off and start having a ton of lines. But I, we need something in the form of a more relatable character that still captures the essence of the Mando. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what they do. They're going to have to step it up or I'm not going to stick with it. The first season I stuck with and it's enough because I do like Star Wars to keep me with it but they've they've got to step it up yeah. so but anyway i don't want to i don't want to spend an entire episode talking about star wars though there's so much to talk about this isn't a star wars i'm not trying to become a full-time star wars youtuber <laughs> okay unless unless i get paid a lot of money uh, unless, unless those views start coming in so uh <laughs> i mean i can't i can't lie i, I would I would. I don't know. I couldn't live. I couldn't live like trying to come up with Star Wars content every single day. Like, and you can tell that they start running out. They're like just trying is because they get these these periods of time where there's so much news. And then there's periods of times where there's less. And so they're like they're groveling, like looking for new news. But in other movie rumor news realm, the uh, Amazon Lord of the Rings show has caused a bit of controversy lately. I don't know if you've seen anything about this, but basically this this is all starts off of like kind of rumors. I mean, it's been, I think, mostly confirmed that this is for the show and it still sparks the discussion. But basically some job listings went up for like a nudity coordinator in regards to an Amazon project, the code name of the project or something. And um, past that, I believe some casting calls went out for actors that were okay with showing nudity on screen and if this was anything other than lord of the rings and tolkien's work i don't think anyone would be that would be paying much attention to it that being said it has actually caused within the tolkien community it has caused a bit of an uproar because i have to agree like well not agree i'm not sure how i feel about it but is that where we're going like nudity in Star Wars, sex in Star Wars. And that's kind of the sentiment that a lot of people in have. Star Wars or the Rings. Did I say Star Wars? Yeah. Bro. You're still on Star Wars. You're obsessed. <laughs> Dude, I'm obsessed with you're Star Wars. You're trying to become a Star Wars. Yeah, journalist. I'm just I'm just really trying to, <laughs> to be just, a Star Wars. YouTuber. You're really reaching for those stories. <laughs> <laughs> you just like that's what Star Wars YouTubers start doing. <laughs> it's just like so in other news, the new um Star Wars of the Ring story. Um, has popped there's gonna be um sex in star wars where (laughs) aragorn and gladriel (laughs) get it on with with rings and and um by the way (laughs) by the way thanos is in star wars now (laughs) but um but yeah i it's it's one of those things where i guess basically the sentiment is people are starting to wonder if lord of the rings tv show is going to try and harness the viewership that uh game of thrones did and the answer is absolutely yes, 100%. They oh, yeah. have to, or this series doesn't succeed. Well, I, I think it's a bad idea, personally, for, for Star Wars to go... Star Wars? Oh, God. Dude. <laughs> <We're Yeah. laughs> I think it's a bad idea for Star Wars to go Game of Thrones style. Star Wars. It's also a bad idea for Lord of the Rings to go Game of Thrones style. Um, just completely threw off my train of thought there. <laughs> no, I think it's a bad idea, but I think they're going to do it anyway. Because if you look at the sort of like the middling success of the hobbit i think studio wise they're gonna think lord of the rings isn't gonna work again like just doing that lord of the rings tone that lord of the rings feel isn't gonna work again what is gonna work what's gonna be game of thrones and and i think that's a bad idea for lord of the rings if you're looking to keep something feeling like lord of the rings yeah if you want it to feel like middle earth if you want it to feel like tolkien you know (laughs) having nudity in lord of the rings is gonna throw you off a little bit like uh, the twilight zone remake show 
that, that Jordan Peele did. Mm-hmm. Um, Twilight Zone, you know, it came out in the 60s. They weren't really allowed to have profanity in them. The new show was, you know, letting them fly, which is fine for, for any show, whatever. As a Twilight Zone fan, it felt really weird watching Twilight Zone, hearing that theme music, and then just hearing a bunch of F-words after that. It felt a little bit weird. It just felt so not with the spirit of the show. Yeah. And, and I it, feel like you're going to have a similar feeling with Lord of the Rings. And I feel like that with Lord of the Rings. However, I think there's a more nuanced discussion to be had with, and it doesn't just have to do with Game of Thrones and the success of Game of Thrones. Amazon bought this show because they wanted their own Game of Thrones. Like, that, there was no question about it. They wanted to do Game of Thrones for Amazon. They need a big budget show. I think they spent like $3 billion on it. So... I understand what they're thinking is we need to appeal to as many people as possible, which means we don't have the room to go out on a limb and do something artistic. We don't have the room to go out on a limb and do something unexpected and hope for success. That's what we would want as artists and as consumers that want to see new and engaging creative things. But with the money involved and all these executives that are probably looking down on it, they're just going We have to do we have to put together the Frankenstein's monster that people will love the most to reach the most people so we can make back all this money we're spending on it. They've already signed on for like three seasons, too. So I understand what they're thinking. I don't know if obviously just something like nudity is what is needed for Lord of the Rings to be successful. Well, it's not just going to be nudity. They're going to go hard with the violence, too, for sure. That was what I was going to head into is that. What I think this is more indicative of is there is an a new rising popularity of extreme violence in a lot of these TV shows on these platforms like Netflix and Amazon and HBO. Everyone's taking after HBO. So they're going to lean into that. I'm not opposed to leaning into the violence, mainly because Lord of the Rings, the original series already did it. Yeah, They didn't go super gruesome, but they did lean into it more than probably Tolkien would have. And if you want to get into what Tolkien would have wanted, mm-hmm. he really didn't lean into the violence. He he took a very wide scope in the books. of it, He was just kind of like, yeah, and then there was a battle and a siege that lasted a few weeks. And um, there was some fighting and a lot of people died and moving on. Yeah. It really wasn't like these hour long sequences. And that was a choice that the movies had to make. And I'm OK with them making them. So I don't want to cri- criticize them going with extra violence. But the nudity thing I do think is a little bit too far because Tolkien was a devout Catholic. Not only that, I believe there are some quotes of his. um, I forgot to prepare them, but they're like quotes of him literally talking about whether or not he would want something like love or sex involved in his works and his view on it. So the idea of bringing it in belligerently Mm -hmm. in a possibly nasty or chaotic way right. or gruesome well, way well, you know in not just as an artistic decision but as a like this is what the market has right now game of thrones went hard with that kind of stuff and you know lord of the rings has a little romance in it a little bit but it's very much like it's very hands-off it's just kind of like oh yeah and they like these people liked each other they loved each other they got married it's really it's really hands-off it's very kids gloves with it but um I, I do think that it is a step too far, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think people are going to be happy about it. And I think you need it. You actually need that fan base. Star, Star Wars. Lord of the Rings has such the fan base <laughs> that I think you need them to really get it on board. Because if you look at something like, I mean, this isn't totally related to Lord, Lord of the Rings, but there was that Tolkien um, biopic that oh, came with out Nicholas Holt. with Nicholas Holt. And it did okay. And it wasn't a great movie as far as I've heard. I haven't watched it. But they didn't have the support of Tolkien fans. Yeah. They already, the fans already knew that it wasn't going to be true to Tolkien. And it wasn't. And they knew that going in, so they didn't support it. And not that, obviously, a TV show can reach new people. I'm not saying it would be just like a biopic, but. You really need to think about that kind of thing. But I don't know. I think Amazon's going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to that because they really there's too much money on the line. I think right. that's the end problem. There's just too much money on the line to to leave anything to chance. And so they need to see these uh what's popular and these trends and they really got to capitalize on it because this is their shot. They're putting out some good shows right now, but this is their like their big shot for taking over the streaming space. 
and they have the property to do it. I think Lord of the Rings can do it. I think Lord of the Rings, I hate to speak some heresy here, but can absolutely destroy everything that Game of Thrones did. A, because Game of Thrones threw it all in the trash with their final season, but also because the actual stories that this show is supposedly going to go down have so much room for a for really engaging plot lines, characters, and iconic, absolutely iconic sequences. There's so much globally that's happening in the second age, which is when they're supposed to be shooting. I know, Tolkien nerd here. It's not everyone knows, but... Oh, yeah, the second age. I got it. Yeah, oh, yeah, the second, second age. age. Um, Comes after but, the first. <laughs> it doesn't come after the first. And before the third. Before the third. Got it. So I'm glad that you're the, the Tolkien, Tolkien expert, expert here. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing where there's so much potential for it that... I think that the story is assuming they can keep an integrity to the story and the production and acting up to par like Game of Thrones did. I think they can blow it out of the water because they have a they have a story that they can work with. I mean, Martin didn't finish the Game of Thrones books and they had to go out on their own. And they were also adhering through up and through the first like five seasons. They were adhering to his books with the second age and what they're going to do with this series it's very broad outline. It's very historic. It's, it's like reading a history text. They're like, yeah, these people went here, did this thing, fought a battle here. This person fell in love with this person, then got betrayed in this way, blah, blah, blah. There's so much room to just write in. Yeah. That if they do it right, they have all the material in the world. But I think that element of walking the line with trends is going to be their hardest thing uh, because it's not just Game of Thrones that has leaned into that violence and that it's every show it's ever since this dawn of this age where there's so many uh, series that are the biggest ones are all on these streaming platforms. It's not on TV anymore. And they're allowed to do things that you couldn't do back in the days when you were on TV. I mean, the mm -hmm. amount of shows that like I never and I know I was a kid when I had TV, but I was never involved in like watching really mature content when I was a kid. I never saw it. There just weren't it was it wasn't as accessible. Now you just you have Netflix. You can watch like some of the craziest, most edgy content. And you look at it, I mean Watchmen, the Watchmen series has leaned into it. Game of Thrones really set it off. Um The Boys is on season two. That show is so out there in terms of just the belligerent, gruesome violence, sex, um, language subject matter etc um i've been watching this new show utopia it's another amazon show so so violent um like have, have you seen have you at least seen the trailer for it have i saw the trailer it? i know it's a i know it's a remake or i don't know if it's a remake but it's like an uh an american adaptation of a british show that came out oh, a few really? years ago and i heard that the british show had numerous complaints about violence too god dude this show is so violent um it's like belligerently violent too, because it's not like a swords and military show. It's like I do have to wonder, like, is this an artistic decision or is this a market trend? Because what are the chances that like 50 of the hottest new shows all just have creators behind them that are like, hey, why don't we just make the most brutal show? Like, It kind of feels like they're all trying to one up each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like well, Altered Carbon super violent. They're like, no, no, no. If you think Altered Carbon's okay. violent. Watch Utopia. It really like, whoa, has whoa, whoa, whoa. just if gotten worse, worse. Violent, Watch the boys. And it's like, you know, I don't mind um, brutal violence as like an artistic decision. Mm -hmm. just, I I do like wonder, I'm like, why, what's, what's the point here story-wise? Sometimes there is a point. And sometimes I'm like, it does feel like they're appealing to what's popular. And I'm just wondering, like, when did that become such a hot trend? because mm -hmm. it was like it was like game of thrones and then just down the line it was like everything is going to be just on the high end of adult content yeah it's well i think it's two things it's i think people wanted to long before now i think a lot of people's appetite for violence especially young men and adults the appetite for that kind of violence was always there but you you just couldn't do it on tv so i think when the when the door was opened the floodgates just it was the flood just came in because there was a lot of people that wanted that. And then second of all, now that you see the trend, I think that people are like, OK, another thing that which Utopia capitalizes on is using the shock factor mm -hmm. of violence to really like get your attention. But even if like I'm not familiar with Utopia 
um, like in terms of having watched it. But um, if you look at um, Gillian Flynn's prior work, um, it's violent, but it's not gratuitously violent. Mm-hmm. Like Widows is not a particularly violent movie. I mean, it's violent as yeah. in there is violence, but it's not a brutally violent movie. Gone Girl is not a brutally violent movie. Yeah. Um. So it's like she moves into a TV show and it's just like throw it and, all out there. And I know that Flynn is the producer on this show. So I don't know. I think how. she's the showrunner. She might be. I know I think she's, she's like executive showrunner. producer. She probably is the showrunner. Um, And, you know, it's not that it's just like super violent. It's not a super action packed show. It's it moves fast. Um, I haven't finished it yet, so we'll see where it goes. But it's been really good so far. But they do. There's. It's like immediately you're like thrown into people just getting massacred, assassinated, murdered in all sorts of ways and brutal ways and on screen, full showing like visual ways. And it's just like coming off of I had just finished watching the boys when I watched this. I'm just like, geez, everything these days. And I was thinking about it and I was like, and I don't I don't mind it. I like it fine. But I was thinking about it. I was like. This is like so different from what I grew up being able to watch. Not just like what I was allowed to watch, but there just weren't there weren't options like this. There was yeah. not. And it's it's clearly a trend. Well, I, I also think that the danger of it is that it, it, it also can dull down and numb the actual like power of um, violence in movies. Like it can be really effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think I think it's really effective when it's used more sparingly or. Um, not shown as much, it can be just as effective. Like if you look at Dunkirk, it's it's PG thirteen, and there's uh, like not an ounce of blood in that movie. Yeah, but it's just as tense. I think it's, it's just as effective. Like Ten Cloverfield Lane, it, there's one there's one scene where a guy gets shot in the head, and it doesn't show it. There's no blood, but it's really effective. And I think if you just go for nothing but show the most gruesome, show the most brutal. I think it's going to get a little dulled down. Yeah, it's, I think we have some time before that. I think within a show it can, but I think right now what you're seeing is this new boom of it. And I think that it will fade. I think people will realize that because right now it's, it's almost feels like a race to, uh, it, it feels like a race to see who can be the most gruesome and I think once they hit like their crescendo of that, where they can't go any further, I think you're going to see it be less and less popular because right now, like when you're watching the boys, some of the ways that people die, it's just like, how creative can we get with how people die? How right. shock shocking can we get? How disgusting can it be? And they're, they're going to reach a point where, where they feel like they've capped out. What well, also does add like an element of, it's a little like tarantino the way that that violence is being done in tv shows now like it's, it's not yeah. like it's super realistic yeah like just the amount of violence is completely ridiculous like if yeah. you try to if you try to think about realism yeah or or, or any sort of like grit to it, it it's totally ridiculous like the punisher it's absurd the yeah. amount of violence yeah and it's it's like it it, it kind of reminds me of like Django unchained like when he goes back and just yeah. shoots up the whole house and it's just like the most cartoony blood just total totally over the top violence it seems more like a tone than a than a um than like a a, a story reason or or a particularly yeah. meaningful reason and I don't, I don't necessarily take issue with it but i do think it's becoming a market trend given the fact that like name name one really popular show that is not just absurdly violent yeah. and i know which one you're gonna name <laughs> it's stranger things and that's it <laughs> That that really is. There's other ones I'm sure, show. but that's the only one that's reached a super popular level without, um, I guess, going to TVMA. And like, I don't have an issue with it, but I do just find it funny that, like, if you took the top sixty, um, you know, streaming service original shows, I I guarantee you ninety percent of them are going to have. Just extremely brutal violence. Yeah, it's I think it will pass, though. Yeah, I, I think it's going to pass. We just I think we have another like five years of of it, them continuing to up the ante. But I, I think people will not just get tired of it. I think it'll just slow down and pass on. But um, in other in other news, did you see, dude, the um, 
they've announced that Electro is returning to Spider-Man. Like, let's get into some Marvel talk did, here. Did they announce that Electro is returning to Spider-Man? Or was it just Jamie Foxx? Jamie Foxx as Electro, as they far said as I found. him as Electro? Ja- Jamie Foxx as Electro. I'm, I'm interested in these rumors. Okay, no, no, no. I mean, this I know that Jamie Foxx is confirmed, but the rumors around it that Garfield and Maguire are coming back? Oh, yeah. Okay, see, I'm... I'm Because I think it's true. about this stuff. Yeah, no, I've seen things like Andrew Garfield, and then I've heard about uh mcguire coming back but what i what i'm confused on is i thought maybe it was like cameo ideas just for like little nods that they were talking about doing um but basically if spider-man 3 has electro as a villain in it and it's jamie fox are they just being like oh he would have played a good electro let's cast him again are they doing a straight up like universes collide type of thing like is he gonna come out of the spider-man the amazing spider-man universe i'm not convinced that he's gonna come in as electro though i don't know it it depends on how many of these rumors turn out to be true like i know that jamie fox is signed on as far as we know i don't think he signed on as electro though because i i don't remember who it was but it was one of like the marvel executives during the sony email leaks um it was one of the mcu executives and um it was during those email leaks and all those email leaks about the amazing spider-man 2 and there was an email leak where um, one of the MCU executives was talking about the Amazing Spider-Man 2 script. And he ripped Electro in that movie. Like, just as a character. He totally ripped, just ripped into him and talked about how terrible of a character he was and how terrible of a villain he was. He didn't have defined powers. And it was like, it was just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So I kind of have a hard time believing that they're going to bring that Electro in. And also yeah. Jamie Foxx said he's not going to be blue. So that's what confuses me is the the rumors of Garfield and Maguire being involved in the movie and then Jamie Foxx. I'm like, are they bringing over I, things or is it just like Jamie Foxx is cast in the movie? So in regards to what he'll be doing, Jamie Foxx is going to be in the movie, but then they're talking about Garfield and Maguire having, I would imagine, cameo type of appearances. But knowing Marvel... What I kind of expect, which to be fair, Sony still has a hand in this, which is probably why they're even able to do this type of crossover thing. But knowing Marvel, I feel like they would not actually lean into such a exciting and cool sounding storyline with that kind of crossover. I feel like they would be like, oh, and by the way, here's a little cameo where we just show you that Andrew Garfield exists in this world yeah. or in another dimension, like like an element where like Tom Holland gets to peek into other dimensions and he just sees them and there's like a little joke about that kind of stuff. I could also see them playing other Spider-Man who are not necessarily from the their movies, you know? Have Hmm. it be like a nod to their movies, but not actually be strictly from their movies. Yeah. You know, have it be like, oh, that's that's Andrew Garfield. He's got a similar costume to what he had in that one. But he's just a Spider-Man. And then you got Tobey Maguire. He's got a similar costume to his original one. And he's just another Spider-Man. I could see them doing that more than being like, yeah, let's uh, let's let's bring Andrew Garfield from his movie. Yeah. And just continue with that. Because there's got to be some... If they did that, there's got to be some time pass, too. Yeah. Because it, yeah, they're a lot right. older now. Both so of them. I've also heard talk of casting a Miles Morales character, too. Like, casting someone to play Miles Morales. Which I don't think they would have, like, him play a major role. But it almost sounds like maybe with the success of Into the Spider-Verse and that character and the idea of these colliding universes, they might be trying to hawk that trend. And I doubt they would do it in the third movie, but kind of start... I feel like maybe they open the door in this movie. Yeah. Um, it's it's too early, I guess, before we... We don't really know enough about the movie. At least I don't to really know where they're going storyline with. I don't even know who the villain is for this also, one. they're going to have to find something in the MCU. Because I don't think Captain Marvel is going to hold, uh, you know, hold people's attention the way that Robert Downey Jr. did. Um, we just very sadly lost Chadwick Boseman, who to me would be the second person to step in and be like the lead yeah i don't think dr strange is going to be the lead of the mcu now you kind of have to have a lead sorry nobody cares about mark ruffalo as hulk he hasn't even gotten his own movie like you're you're kind of running out of things to do so if they went and just said okay now we're doing a multiverse that's a different direction that would have me actually go 
It actually makes sense and, too, and be excited to see one. when Tom Holland was introduced. Spider Man, they were talking about Spider Man being the successor to Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, and honestly. Now, the more I think about it, it does make perfect sense because the only thing that can get bigger and better and crazier and higher stakes than Thanos time traveling, snapping everyone out of existence and saving the entire universe is to get into multiple universes. Yeah. And I mean, that really could be their key. And I mean, there's a there's plenty of storylines within the comics that fans love that involve those types of things and everything along with like secret wars i've heard a lot of people wanting to get into secret wars and rumors about them including elements like that in further movies so i mean they because they really need to come out swinging like right now the lineup of movies does not swing like black widow captain marvel even spider-man 3 none of it like comes out like hitting me with like that is so awesome i can't wait to get back into marvel movies they need to do something like that they've got to drop a storyline that makes you go where are we going with this? Right. Because we always knew from Iron Man early on, like we always knew, Oh God, Thanos is getting that infinity gauntlet and it's about to get real. We don't have that anymore right now. Mm -hmm. So we need to see whatever the first or second movie that comes back needs to set something up. That's going to put something in play. That's really going to be rewarding. Yeah. And also after, um, was it end game? I always forget the title of that one. Um, after end game, it's a little hard to go down to like, Spider-Man Far From Home and be like, oh, cool. Now we're just concerned about this high school trip to, you know, I don't remember where he was in that movie. Wherever. Somewhere we're going overseas. on a high school trip. Mysterio's here. Wow. Big stakes. You just kind of go, yeah. like, oh, no, they just snapped everybody in ex- out of existence, snapped them back into existence. And now we're just like, well, he's going on a trip. Let's get real excited, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you, yeah. you kind of have this issue where how do you go up from Endgame? Like, how do you get, how do you do something more interesting? You'd have, you would have to go, not necessarily bigger, but you'd have to either really hone, hone in and focus on the characters. I don't feel like they're going to do that. I feel like they're going to keep, keep it with the, um, yeah. you know, keep it with the MCU. Yeah. Because they, they would have to go in the had, opposite they, direction. They've, they've always have relied heavily in. on connections with each other. Like, I don't think any of the movies have really like relied on just the characters of the movies. Yeah, you need They've a really, really character relied heavy, like, on moving forward some other construction type of movie, like right. a Logan type of movie. And I don't think they're going to go that route. Yeah. I think they're going to go the multiverse route. Yeah. Which I'm not too pumped on anything Marvel right now, especially after Endgame. I wasn't even that pumped at that point, but like I saw it through to the end and I'm okay with the way they finished that. That being said, they need something to get people involved because I've heard I know a lot of people are just in they just like to go see Marvel movies they'll go see them we'll check them out but we kind of need something to get excited about when it comes to Marvel movies and if they pull off something like a a strong multiverse idea I'm I I wouldn't get like hooked into it but I'm there for it I'll check it out like I'm interested to see what they would do whereas right now I'm like maybe I'll see it because it's a blockbuster film and I'm bored but like if they actually do that I'd be like so what's gonna happen next I'm actually interested in where where we're going so Yeah, it's it's interesting. I know they still. Oh, I don't know if they still want to, but I know it was never fully canceled as far as I know. The Sinister Six movie that oh, was originally yeah. planned for Garfield Spider-Man and then moved on to just being totally unrelated and then moved on to maybe being part of Tom Holland's. Yeah. Thing. I wonder if they would bring that out. You know, it would be interesting if they took like Jamie Foxx from Garfield Spider-Man or, or maybe somebody from... Um, the Raimi Spider-Man and then somebody from Tom Holland Spider-Man and, and, and made that almost like the Sinister Six. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they'd actually do that, but it does make me wonder why they would bring Jamie Foxx, a villain that was supposedly killed from a dead series into uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man. What, what I think in closing, what I what I think that Marvel needs to do is and it's it's a question of whether or not they have the balls to do it and whether or not they can pull it off. I don't think I think it can continue as it is and do okay. I don't think that they can reach the heights that they reached with the last arc unless they go out on a limb and try something truly new and impressive, something exciting, something creative, something that makes people go, oh, wow, they mean business because they've fallen into a place where. I feel like it's just like, oh, yeah, it's just part of the daily schedule. New Marvel movie. We're just doing these things. But Endgame and that entire Avengers arc really went like, despite it being something we built up to, it being part of the system of Marvel that we were used to, 
it was such a climax that it made people be like, wow, that's something we have not seen. That is a scope that we were not like that. We've always wanted to see. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what have we always wanted to see now? I can't think of anything. You have to come up with something that throws me for a loop. You have to give me a curveball. And what I want to see is Marvel actually wind up that curveball and throw and see, see what we get. And I think they can stick the landing. They have enough money. They have enough people behind it. I think they can stick it if they will commit to it. The problem is the, the fear that you get from these big corporate companies and the fact that they're not willing to trust, to trust an idea, to trust the concept. So yeah. that's that's what I that's what I would like to see personally. Yeah. I'd just like to see Into the Spider-Verse, too, actually. Yeah, the, the truth is the truth is what they're <laughs> what they would be doing regardless is just trying to capitalize on Into the Spider-Verse yeah. and hawk that success, which I don't know if that would sit well with fans. But yeah. anyway, uh, we've, we've been going for quite a while and that covers most of the recent news. What's going on in Hollywood? All the interesting bits, at least all the controversies that I'm interested in and feel like I can contribute to the conversation on. We've been going for quite a while. It has been quite a fun time, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I am Alex Courtright. This is Jonathan Courtright. Did I say your name earlier, bro? I thought you did. Did I introduce you? Yes. I thought you introduced me. I, for some reason, like halfway through this podcast, I was like, dude, did I not even like say like your name? If not, I'll just be mystery man. Did I not? T- <laughs> yeah. Did I not tell them like, oh, yeah, we're brothers. It's the court right no you did 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 i for real okay well then scratch everything (laughs) i just said it's been a great podcast we will be back here next week podcast goes up every monday at least i hope until i break that schedule but mondays are the podcast days i hope you guys enjoyed check back next week for some more news we'll get into some book talk and whatever is going on in the world with pop culture entertainment and the like we'll see you guys next time don't forget to like and subscribe